Good morning. Today, me and Luca will be presenting a business case called Addressing the Business Challenge of Geographic Redundancy, Strategies for Kubernetes Using SUSE Rancher. What do we have in our agenda for this talk? For starters, we will be talking a bit about what are the cloud computing risks and how to minimize them when it comes to think on a strategy using Kubernetes. Later, we will touch ground on defining a multi-cloud strategy and also how to manage your Kubernetes clusters. Finally, how to manage many Kubernetes clusters and what tools are at your disposal. The speakers today, me, Luis Felipe Passos, and my colleague, Luca Barce, both members of pre-sales engineering team for South EMEA, covering Italy and Spain. So, cloud computing risks and how to minimize them. Nowadays, we all know cloud is a reality. It is being used in a, a small scale, in a large scale, in dev environments, stage in production, you name it. Cloud benefits are well known at this moment. So it might come natural that you want to deploy your applications in the cloud. But using cloud also brings its own risks. And if the right strategy is not taken into account, it might even be considered a dangerous environment. When we think about cloud, regardless of what cloud provider you think about, we are talking about a physical location, most likely a data center. What can happen? Well, worst case scenario, data centers fail, which is uh, in a polite way, uh, in which in a polite way is often called unplanned data center outage. The root cause can be hardware failure, software bugs, human error, etc. The thing is that, or the important thing here is that it will impact your applications for sure. Also, data centers might be distant from users, which can unfortunately represent a latency issue for your applications. It might also be that the specific cloud provider is not the best option for your applications, or that the cloud providers you consider are using tools that are somehow creating a vendor lock-in environment. The same, at first, uh, can be harmless. I mean, vendor lock-in can be like, OK, it's fine. It's OK for my design, let's say. But what if your business requires to define a multi-cloud strategy in the future? Therefore, it is wise to avoid vendor lock-in. Or what if you want to benefit from operational agility, portability, and costs from different cloud providers? Now, now that we talk about the risks, we want to talk about on how to minimize them. First consider using multiple data centers. Why? So you will not be affected by any of, unplan of the unplanned outage one data center can be affected from. Your strategy can also consider a mix in data centers types. Let's say a variety of cloud plus uh, a cloud or, or on-prem environments, which will only improve your application resiliency. You might be also able to choose data centers that are close to your customers. This will shorten the distance between data centers and user, users, reducing any possible latency issues for your applications. Doing this, you might also increase your reach of serving a specific client requests or a specific workloads if you need it. Also, when defining your strategy, avoid tools related to a specific cloud provider. This will keep you away from vendor lock-in issues and will give you freedom your application needs to reside in any type of cloud. We can help by thinking that containerized applications and Kubernetes for orchestration will come very handy for what we just mentioned due to their portability. With both tools in hand, you will be able to operate an architecture that is distributed across different cloud environments in the same way. Of course, this is not an easy path. Defining this sort of strategy has many angles, many things to be taken into account. It is definitely a complex task. 
we know that handling different clouds require a specific cloud skills in your, ski, in your staff. The same might not have the proper knowledge or at least not in all clouds, adding extra complexity. Do not forget that you need to take into account your business requirements at all time. Defining your multi-cloud strategy can bring you towards a complicated environment where it is necessary to consider different tools to support you in this process. Now that you consider the cloud's possible risks and what might be the best for your application, it is time to define your own multi-cloud strategy to scale your Kubernetes cluster management. This is the time when the questions are, are coming very handy. So one piece, of, one piece of advice, write down your objectives. Ask yourself the following questions and put them on a list whenever possible. Why do you need a multi-cloud strategy or do you need it now? Well, this will depend on the specific use case. Questions like, does your application has, let's say, multi-cloud needs? Or uh, what are the cloud providers you want to use? This is where a pros and cons list will be very handy for your strategy. Listing them and confronting them with your application and your business requirements will turn useful for sure. Will you gain something using managed service, services from cloud providers? Well, this is related also to the previous questions. Question, have you considered some of the cloud providers for the managed services they offer? Then what is the, the company situation outside of your Kubernetes landscape? Does your DevOps strategy takes into account CI, CD tools, specific knowledge? Do you need automation? If yes, at what level? Also, how important performance is? This is strictly, strictly about your use case. Does your application performance will be driven by throughput and latency? If yes, it would be very handy if an estimate is calculated. How precious is your, your data is? You need, we need to take into consideration, for example, terms like RPO, recovery point objective, or RTO, recovery time objective. This needs to be defined in case of a backup of disaster recovery strategies are set in place. Also, you would want to spec specify if you need multi um, multi geo high availability for your data and many other questions depending on your use case. Now, in addition to the sets of questions, there are several technical aspects to be considered. The same need to be 100% aligned with, the, with your business requirements and drive your multi cloud strategy. Now, some of them will come already, let's say, for free. In our case, uh, we are already considering deploying container as applications using Kubernetes. Means that we can benefit from some of the out of the box features Kubernetes brings to the table. Aspects to consider might be, for example, infrastructure, networking, applications, and data. If we focus in, if we are focusing in the data area, things are things are going to be a bit different when talking about the stateless and stateful applications. First, let's start defining what a stateless application is. They are applications which do not storage, do not store data or application state to the Kubernetes cluster or to persistent storage. Instead, data and, data and application state stay with the client, which makes stateless application more scalable. An example of a stateless transaction would be doing, for example, a search online to answer a question you've thought of. You, you type your question into the search engine and hit enter. If your transaction is interrupted or closed accidentally, you just start a new one. Think of stateless transaction as a, as a vending machine, a single request and a response, and that's it. In this case, you would like to configure and manage your cluster using infrastructure as code, as code tools like Terraform, for example. Also, you would like to distribute applications through GitHub tools, so you will make sure that the right version, in, version of your application is always running. Last piece of advice, try 
to use tools that already exist for your application. For, for example, and if possible, open source tools. The idea is to make your life easier with tools that have already proven working as they should. Now we are gonna talk, we're gonna talk about stateful applications. So what are they? Stateful applications save data to persistent disk storage for use by the server, by clients, or by other applications. An example of a stateful application is a database or key value store to which data is saved and retrieved by other applications. In this case, we want to synchronize the data present in your application deployed in different data centers. But this syncing operation might have different meanings, which vary depending on the use case, but also can impact your performance in different ways. It is very important and fundamental that you have well-defined business objectives, which will then drive your application deployment. So the possible impact on performances is well known during the whole process and the right measures to avoid problems are taken into account. Here again, we, we go back to the question, do you, do you, why do you need multi-cloud? Or for example, you want to consider uh, questions like, would you benefit from a disaster recovery process? Do you need geo redundancy? Do you need geo high availability, et cetera, et cetera. Now uh, I'll give the stage to Luca, who's going to talk to you about the tools at your disposal to manage many Kubernetes. So, thank you. Thank you, Luis. Now we have clear in mind all the aspects that we have to consider when we are building our multi-cloud strategy. I want you to keep the most important points in mind when you are talking. So you use Kubernetes so that you have a common layer to interact with, with all the different cloud providers or on-prem, okay? And on top of Kubernetes, you should do a couple of really important things. You should automatize and track all the operation on your environment both for what regards your applications and your infrastructure, okay? So that it's easy to uh, verify what you have done, to verify what uh, uh, application is running, at what version, and so on. So that uh, uh, it's easier to manage all your infrastructure. Automatize everything could be an expensive operation, especially at the beginning of the project, but with the project going on, I can totally assure you that you will uh, find a lot of benefit automatizing everything. Secondly, I want you to keep in mind that distribute data between different data centers that can be on different cloud providers or on different regions of the same cloud provider or on-prem and in cloud, etc., is a really expensive operation, okay? So it is important to have at least a high level of the technical limitations and try, if possible, to align your business requirement to it. So the biggest uh, technical requirement that I would explain to spend a couple of minutes to talking about is related to latency. As you can see from the slide, if we are in a single data center, we can expect a network latency of about one millisecond as an order of magnitude, not a specific number that you have to comply to. But as an order of magnitude, you have a network latency of about one millisecond. Okay. If we instead we have to communicate between different data center, it is reasonable to expect a network latency of something in between 10 and 100 milliseconds. These are not, let's say, big numbers. The fact is that uh, high latencies usually is able to disrupt the performance of distributed databases, in particular ATCD, which is at the core of uh, Kubernetes. So if uh, we are to build 
a um, it is the cluster distributed distributed between different data center, we have to be really careful about the guaranteed latency of our different data center. Otherwise, we will for sure encounter a lot of issues when we will use ATCD. Okay. It is really difficult to manage distributed systems distributed between different uh, data center, different regions, on-prem and in cloud and so on, you should really be careful about that because of uh, the latency. I would also like to stress out that you should always keep in mind your business requirement. For example, your KPIs, your RPOs, your RTOs, etc. Because you risk to pay an high price in terms of performance if you want to distribute your data a lot. For example, if you need an application to manage, let's say, 10,000 requests per second, and if you want to store all the requests on multiple uh, data center, uh, then you have to, um, to think about this business requirement uh, very thoroughly because it, is, uh, it can be difficult to um, save all the data in all your data centers. So pay attention when you are distributing data before because of the latency. Okay, now let's go on. Let's suppose that um, we uh, are about to um, create a multi-cloud strategy for our company and in this last few slides we will show you how the um, different infrastructure management issues will affect your deployment and the tools that we have at our disposal. Let's suppose that our infrastructure is composed on different Kubernetes cluster on different data center geographically far away one from each other. We have at least three different sets of issues that we have to tackle down somehow. First of all, we want to orchestrate our infrastructure and our applications in a coherent way. Second, we want to interconnect our application between different clusters so that if an application is running on my cluster 2, I want, for example, application running, applications running on cluster 1 or on cluster 3 to access the service that uh, this specific application is exposing on cluster 2. Finally, we want to sync data so that if we have a piece of information of our cluster 1, we want to be able to bring this piece of information also in cluster 2 or on our cluster 3. These three areas are related to very different technical aspects and should be managed accordingly. Let's start with the first layer. We have to orchestrate our infrastructure and our application in a coherent way. So we need a tool that helps us manage in an efficient way different Kubernetes cluster everywhere, everywhere from a centralized point, from, a, let's say, a single pane of glass. Okay. In this way, we will have an overview of our configurations, our user, how our applications are deployed, etc. This instrument should be powerful enough also to uh, be um, compatible with uh, tools that help you automatize all the operations that you need. In its portfolio, SUSE at this stage offers two different um, solutions. One is range, the other one is split. The market offers other, a lot of different solutions to this scope. Now I will um, speak a, a little about these two solutions, Ranger and Fleet. Ranger is an instrument that helps us manage different Kubernetes cluster everywhere they are located. Ranger is uh, really powerful when we are talking about integrations with many infrastructure as code tools, for example, 
therefore, so that we can easily optimize management okay, of uh, your Kubernetes infrastructure. Secondly, uh, within SUSE Rancher, SUSE offers also Fleet. Fleet is a solution that helps you distributing your application on as many Kubernetes clusters you want and helps you keeping them updated so that if you have an application on cluster one, you can distribute your application the same version on cluster two, on cluster three, and so on. Okay, so combining Rancher with Fleet and automatize every operation you will do on your Kubernetes cluster will help you a lot in managing all the Kubernetes cluster that you need. Let's go on with the second layer. So we have to interconnect our application. Let's suppose that we have many Kubernetes cluster. There are installed different applications on different cluster. And um, so we need a um, trusted way to distribute our traffic between all the different clusters that uh, um, we are managing. Okay. For this um, for this scope, uh, we have powerful tools which are called service meshes. Service meshes uh, are, um, are, applica are applications that uh, help our services, our applications, to be connected one to another in a really easy and powerful way even if they are distributed even if our application are distributed on different clusters okay service service meshes represent the solutions that help us reaching this objective the objective to communicate between different clusters giving us important key features like traffic management observability policy enforcement and so on so with service meshes it's easy to um, make applications communicate between different kubernetes cluster finally the most difficult um, the most difficult layer syncing data okay our data can be distributed on distributed on different cluster for a lot of reasons as we talked about before for example we um, want to increase the overall performance of our applications. We want to increase the resiliencies of our applications. We might need high availability, we might need disaster recoveries, we might need backups, we might need scalabilities, and so on. In my opinion, this is the most delicate aspect when we are thinking about uh, you, um, developing a multi-cloud strategy okay and at this point one should really express the business requirements so that it is possible to create a balance between the related costs costs are not the cost just in terms of money but costs in terms of performances for example the latency the throughput the totally amount of requests that we are able to process and so on okay so we should really create a balance between the costs uh, between uh, the required latency and the total throughput between uh, our rpos and rtos and so on because for sure one um, would want to have all the data saved in uh, a lot of um, uh, different data center so that one will never lose the, their data. From a technical point of view, this is a really difficult task and you really have, uh, you, you really need to have at least an high level overview of the um, technical limits so that you can create this really important balance between all these aspects that we talk about. 
for what concerns this uh, syncing data layer, we have many tools out in the market that help us for this difficult task. And uh, the one better for our, our use case when we are building our multi-cloud strategies will strongly be related to our business requirement. Always rem remember that. SUSE offer Longhorn, which is a distributed cloud native storage that guarantees H a high availability within a single cluster. With Longhorn, you can back up your data. So maybe Longhorn, in a few cases, can be um, can be the tool that you need. So I would like to point out a small conclusion, which is that designing a multi-cloud strategy will imply a deep understanding of your business requirement. You should always keep in mind that you do not have many issues to tackle down, but that you have to build a powerful suite of solutions of product that will help you reaching your business goal so that your business can flourish on your cloud native infrastructure geographically distributed. So I would like to thank you for listening to this talk. And well, if you have uh, any question, just keep in touch. Thank you.